Nope. You gonna teach class today? Oh, you smell terrible. What did you get into that you smell so bad? You smell like rotten fish. Oh, come on. Don't be like that. Well, anyway. So, get, get down. I don't, I don't want to be here no more. Don't lay down. As you can tell, I am broadcasting live from my house. It's, it's a little different. But, so, we are condensed into a very narrow time frame. We've got five weeks to do all this work. So we got to dial it up a notch. The last assignment isn't even due yet. And I'm about to outline for you the new one. So what we're going to do next as we move forward, you guys have a crisis that you have to navigate. The crisis is an exercise between public and external discourse and private internal discourse. I believe it's been a long time since I actually went through your book, but there should be a section about all this um, within the textbook, because this is one of those things where you're supposed to go in and really experiment with these types of language. So think for a minute, something really bad or really complicated or really unfortunate is about to happen to your group or your company. You have to find a way to negotiate these unfortunate events and either save face or organize your public response. Now, for this assignment, everyone is responsible for four pages. You heard me right. Four pages. Each person of the group must submit two full pages of internal discourse an external discourse. You might have to dig a little deep for all of this. Now, just to throw this out there, internal discourse can take the can take a lot of different forms. Um, whether you're standing around the coffee pot, the water cooler, and you create like a little script for discussions, meeting notes, all of those things can be internal discussion. But probably the most popular way of covering internal discussion is with memos or emails. Now, it's funny that I used to teach memo format in these classes. Before I taught technical writing, I taught the, uh, what was it, 1012, which was business and professional writing. And it's funny because technical writing really absorbed most of that stuff. A lot of people don't know this, but emails completely absorbed the memo format. To the point that most of what memos used to do is now covered by email. And memo format is exactly the way you see in emails, even down to the two line, the subject, the CC, and even the BCC, which is the blind copy. And of course, you know, user copy where you can send an email out to a whole bunch of people at the same time. Emails are memos. They're the exact same thing. So one of the easiest ways that most of the groups format the internal discussion is by sending emails to each other. Now, there are several different ways of doing this. You can mimic the email format within the discussion forum so that you guys are sharing all this stuff. Or you could even just email each other and take screenshots of all those emails, right? And that can count as your internal communication. What is that internal communication supposed to discuss? Your strategy. Internal communication in a company can be much, much more relaxed in the sense that you're not necessarily worried about how these things will be perceived, right? Because you know who's going to be perceiving it. Now, it is supposed to be professional, Right. So you do need to maintain decorum as you're communicating back and forth to each other. But some of you guys might have less decorum than others, especially depending upon what your topic is. Are people working at a bar going to be taking a hyper formal language with the way that they discuss problems? Not necessarily. There might be some colorful language 
especially since you guys are starting this business together. You guys are, you know, partners. You could treat each other as equals. This actually kind of leads into another interesting conversation. Now, bear with me a moment because this sounds incredibly obvious, but when you start digging into the specifics of this, you can kind of um, discover a few a few topics, a few ideas that you might not have thought about before. Case in point, think about how your conversation, think about how your communication changes if you're communicating with a superior. If you're communicating with a superior, especially a very far up superior up the chain of command, you get hyper, hyper, hyper formal, right? If you're communicating with someone who's much closer to you on the chain of command or even an equal, you typically don't have to be so formal. And in fact, it can be very odd to be hyper formal with someone who's on the same level of command as you. Some people might take offense to that. Why are you treating me as this kind of distant? It can, it can kind of, it can make conversation extremely awkward if you approach it in a very formal style, right? You're going to be more familiar with people who are closer to your level of seniority. Now, what happens if you're talking with people who are very far below you in seniority? You readopt the formal attitude. You maintain a kind of distance with formality. Now, I could spend an entire video talking about all this, but you know, I do want to try to move us a little bit faster. Just think for a minute. Why do we do that? Why do we maintain formality in both spectrums, right? It's, it's very strange to me. It's, it's odd. Um, so that level of formality is there to put that distance between us to say, no, I am not someone that you can banter with, right? There's um, a level of distance that we maintain between us. For the most part, you guys aren't going to necessarily be doing that because I have you starting companies, but it's something to kind of think about, right? So as far as the internal communications go, you guys can kind of treat this as everyday conversation because you don't necessarily have to maintain all of that distance as you're trying to ne negotiate these problems. Now, the external communication is going to be the thing that really locks down. There are a lot of different ways of formatting external communication. There are business letters. There are um, emails to outside organizations. There are press releases. There are reports. All of these things can be formatted amongst your group members, right? You have to kind of pick what kind of communication you're going to participate participating in. Press releases can actually be very large packets of material. Um, I'll try to find a template for a press release. Since you have to straddle the line between the internal communication and the external communication. External communication is not necessarily going to be something that you write from an individual uh, perspective. That's going to be collaborative. The, in, the internal is going to be very individual, whereas the external needs to be collaboratively written. You really don't want external communication to be 100% like thrust upon the shoulders of one person. You want it to be a communication collectively from the organization itself. So that means we're thrust back into the collaborative effort again. This is why I like this class so much. These types of things are extremely important to exercise because this is what the real world actually demands of us when we communicate. And a lot of people go out into the world and they don't understand how to communicate in this way. And it can cause a lot of problems. I would argue, okay, somebody's going to throw a pie at my face. That's okay. I kind of deserve it. I would argue that Donald Trump does not necessarily understand these distinctions very well. Every time he communicates, he's always communicating from a personal perspective, no matter what position he holds, no matter what organization he's communicating on behalf of. Now, this is this could actually be looked at as a strength. That might be part of the reason he got elected is because he comes off as 
exceedingly genuine when most of the time professional communication does everything it can to distance ourselves from what we're communicating. And Trump comes in and he goes, he flies by the wire and it's always Trump, 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 Trump. He, he's always communicating as himself. It comes with a whole mix of problems. So one of the other weird things that happens when I'm teaching this class is a lot of the stuff that I'm teaching you is kind of in flux. I've often said that we might be entering into a new communication age, whereas Trump has had a great deal of success communicating that it was using communication that flies in the face of what we've done traditionally. So it's funny because politicians typically know how to turn that off when they need to. When a politician begins saying, I had a conversation with one of my constituents and I was moved. That politician very clearly turns that switch to say, I'm going to communicate from a personal perspective now. I'm going into emotion mode. Donald Trump will have that switch. He's always communicating from a very emotional, very personal space. Again, I'd like to emphasize that's not necessarily a weakness. I mean, it's, that might be one of the reasons he won the election. So I, this kind of stuff really gets me, you know, it always kind of gets my brain buzzing because uh, a lot of things I'm telling you might not necessarily survive in the real world. I mean, things are always being challenged and things are always in flux. So anyway, as general outline, I'll give you guys some templates of what I'm expecting. As far as a tentative due date for this, let's, I need to write this down as well. Your next assignment, um, well, the one, um, like I said, I'm kind of a little mixed up here. The uh, business plan is due this Wednesday. So let me look at on my phone. I need to be more prepared. Good Lord, David. Don't worry, I'm about to tell you your crises. When I deliver your crises, this might you might have a better idea of what kind of stuff you're going to be writing. Uh, but let me get you the actual due date real quick. The due date for this assignment, I just realized I'm going to have to change all these when I teach this class again. That's okay. Um, so June 3rd, let's say June 10th should be a good due date for this one. We're closing in on the last day of class, June 22nd. So that... Anyway, I'm thinking out loud during a lecture. I shouldn't do that. It's not a really good space for online, you know, video lectures. Anyway, June 10th. I have a pin here somewhere. June 10th. Um, so without further ado, before I get too ahead of myself, let's talk about our group crises. Video game group. Another mass shooting has occurred. Games are under scrutiny. Now, your game might not have a lot of violence in it. If it does, that really works. But if it doesn't have a lot of violence in it, you're still to assume that games themselves are being blamed for this. Um, because the shooter, the person who went on the violent rampage, was a very, very, very big fan of your game. How do you deal with that? What are you going to do? How do you respond? I'm a little demented when it comes to this stuff, right? Now, I I don't even know what kind of advice I would have for you. And that's kind of the fun of this, right? Remember, we're still in role play mode. We're still playing around with what our response might be. Um, now that I got an actual scenario out there, Here's what I want you guys to do after this video. I want you to just go into the discussion forums and do some general discussion about what you will do to respond to this. If you guys want to add details to this story, feel free. You can come up with the shooter's name. You can figure out where he attacked. You might even come up with motive. All of this stuff is yours. You can play with these concepts as I give them to you. All right? So... That's your crisis video game. There was a mass shooting and he loved your game. And now everybody is talking about your game in the absolute worst possible way. Now, Racing League. There was an absolutely horrible accident in a race. One of your drivers, your most popular drivers, is now disfigured. He has lost both of his eyes. The driver has denounced the league as being fundamentally unsafe. He's attacking you. 
How do you respond to that? We one of the things I would suggest is maybe come up with some new safety measures or announce that you will try to explore new safety measures. You could do that, or you could start attacking him personally, right? <laughs> Again, that's not something I ever, ever, ever would have recommended in this class. But there are certain members of leadership who would who would respond by attacking someone personally for criticism, right? You criticize me, I'm going to talk about your spouse or your financial situation. That's the world we live in, right? That's that's where we are right now. So that might actually be a legitimate way of going about this. Just make it formal when you get to the public portion of this, which I'll do another video on Wednesday and expand upon all these ideas, okay? The zoo. One of your animals escaped. You may choose which one. And it ate a baby. Anyway, I had something all about how it vomited the baby back up and everybody saw it. But I was like, you know, that's a little morbid. Anyway, one of your animals escaped, ate a baby, and now everybody's mad at you. What are you going to do with that? Right? I have problems, y'all. I just, I love this class. All right. Local bar. This one I had some fun with, too. Um, I put a specific a, a specific artist in here. I originally had it as 50 Cent, but then I went back and I was like, I don't know if 50 Cent would ever actually do this. So keep in mind, I just kind of pulled a name out of the air. This is no way a comment on 50 Cent. So I think I'm actually just going to say um, very popular artist um, has done an impromptu performance. He showed up and he performed at your bar. Unfortunately, riots ensued when he insulted a local high school football team. Uh, there was a massive amount of damage done to the bar, and the local government is exceedingly mad at you. They're blaming you for this. I, I got up at like five in the morning and wrote all these down. I probably should have a little more coffee before I settled on them. Okay, use car lot. This might be the absolute worst of all. Um, I apologize for doing this to you, but... Um, I enjoy this type of thing way too much. Use car lot. <clears throat> a, uh, a jalopy, your choice of what car. So you get to choose what make and model and year and all that stuff. Um, you sold has exploded. So a car that you sold has inexplicably caught fire and um, roasted a family of four alive in the parking lot of a Little Caesars. Now, in a really ironic twist, the pizza was fine. <laughs> you gotta include that. The pizza came out of this unscathed. Okay. The pizza was cooked and just absolutely delicious. But yeah, family of four roasted alive in a car that you sold off of the lot. Anyway, um, as far as getting started on this, all I want you to do right now is to go into the discussion forums and uh, play with this idea. Try to figure out what it is exactly you're going to do with it. Um, how will you respond? This first round of discussion posts in the forums can be, I'm not going to grade these harshly. So just go into the forums, talk about what you might do, make a plan. Um, if you want to role play these posts, that, that's fine. If you don't want to, that's fine as well. Um, on Wednesday, I'm going to post a new video that gives you a little bit more information of stuff that I'm looking for for this assignment, because honestly, the funding plan isn't even due until then anyway. So anyway, this just kind of getting in, getting in front, trying to move us a little bit for, forward. So this material is out there. I am planning on hosting a concurrent session at some point Tuesday. I will be in my office all day. I will be on Microsoft Teams. So if you want to come into the chat, if you want to come in and do a video conference, I'm kind of planning on just sort of being in the office all day. I might do specify a specific time that I'll be available and we can do like a big conference call. I really want to experiment with that. So in any case, keep an eye out on things for Tuesday. And um, I want a bagel. I love bagels. Anyway, I'll also get you a nice write up of all of these scenarios soon um expect them to filter in through the day uh i think that's all i got you got anything buddy my dog's asleep and he's really really cute 
You guys be safe. Have a wonderful day. End stream. End stream. <laughs>